Every entity object is going to have a state machine. This state machine's job is to execute the current state. If we go into our game loop, on every single pass of the game loop, this state machine's update function is going to be called. So what does the state machine's code look like, and what does a current state look like? Well, the state machine is going to be a class that holds properties known as current and global states, as well as the previous global and previous current state. It will also hold a reference or a pointer to the owner. Every enemy will have its own state machine. Therefore, the owner is going to be the enemy that this state machine belongs to. However, going onwards, the theory is that a global state can be thought of as a higher priority state, while the current state is just a lower priority state. Both of these states will call their execute function in the update function of the state machine. This update function, as we had seen before, is called on every pass of the game loop. The higher priority state will take precedence and it will dictate what the lower priority state will be. We will also have change global state and change state methods that will exit and they will enter states. But I'll touch more on this later. In the video clip I showed you, you can see two possible current behaviors, the hunt state and shoot rock state. There is also one possible global behavior which is the search state. These states will contain a minimal amount of data, with the majority of the data that they need being passed to them through arguments in their functions. Their jobs are to make sure that the enemy is doing something. The search state is the global state that determines what the current state of the enemy will be. There are conditional statements inside this execute function that will determine whether the enemy enters the hunt player state or the shoot rock state. Then, both the shoot rock state and the hunt rock state have their own execute functions which contain the logic that's needed to make the enemy perform the desired behavior. Finally, when this search state behavior decides the current state behavior, the global state will reset back to search state again, which then will determine the next new behavior after two and a half seconds have elapsed. The enter and exit functions can be used to set internal properties of these states, which I'm doing here with this start time. These functions are fired upon entrance into the state and exiting the state. Since this is a simple example, I don't have many uses for them, but you can use them to send messages to other entities, you can delete other objects when a specific state is entered or exited, or you can even initialize a certain animation upon entering or exiting a state. Now that we have an understanding of what's going on with these states, we can understand what's happening in the state machine. When a new state is passed into either the global or current state, the old global slash current state is exited, and the correct state property is set to the argument, and the new state's enter function is called. Finally, when we do create the new enemy, we want to initialize a state machine and set the new enemy's property to it, and we also want to set the initial global property to the search state. So don't skip this part because I have some important final things for us to touch on. So the architecture pattern that we are using is known as a finite state machine. And this is just a simple example. If you follow this pattern, it can be scaled up to allow for some quite complex decision making. And also I want to point out that the functionality that I was using to make the enemies one shoot rocks and two to track the player depend upon my own implementation of the logic in those states. So if you have a behavior you want to implement, that behavior will depend upon the unique logic required for your situation. This video is to simply show you the proper pattern used to create a finite state machine AI. If you would like to learn more, check out my Legend of Zelda series where I go into greater detail on how to build out this pattern even further.